well, grunge didn't, you know, I would say it, it wiped out everything, <laughs> you know, it, you know, and ironically it was from Seattle, you know, which is really weird because, you know, when we were in the middle of Seattle, like in terms of like we had metal church and Queensryche and air apparent and fifth angel. And, you know, we had kind of a metal scene going. And as a matter of fact, uh, our producer, Terry Date, uh, he went on to produce Soundgarden and Deftones and Pantera. And, you know, the Fifth Angel album was the first album he ever did. That was his first record ever. <clears throat> and it was signed by Epic, which tells you something. You know, it's like we did a great job. We were all very young. You know, we were trying to do everything with excellence. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is I can go listen to that first album today you know, and, and we were very precise and we were very exact and we were trying to make a great album. And I'm very proud of that record. It sounds like we had Pro Tools and we didn't have Pro Tools. You know, it was all two inch tape. You know, everything was in tune and in time and it's tight and it's powerful and there's energy and there's life. And, um, you know, it's really something that, uh, you know, is fantastic to go back and listen to and go, you know, wow, we were so young when we did this, but we cared. You know, we cared and we tried to make something great. And I think I think it stood the test of time. And and I think, you know, I think, you know, we did make something I feel, you know, was sure. great art. It's lasting to this day. People are still talking about it this many years later. Sure. And then what I find interesting about that is because, uh, well, obviously today, bands like Soundgarden, as you mentioned, and Nirvana, they're well, well respected for what they did and all, everything. But at the time, uh, what were the feelings within kind of the community that you were playing in? Because I can imagine, like you said, you made really cool music. And then for some reason, kind of outside of music, almost, it, 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 it got, it failed to get any, or not failed to get any, but traction was harder to come by. So, so well, it was, it was wiped out. I mean, if you okay. look at the era, I mean, even bands like Megadeth and Judas Priest and Metallica, I mean, they all had a very dark period there. I mean, you know, Rob Halford went off to try, uh, you know, a different thing with Fight and um, Metallica wasn't doing well. I mean, in, in Europe, they were still doing well, but in the United States, nothing. Um, mm -hmm. Megadeth was was really getting hurt, too. So it's like it wasn't just us. It was anything from that era was like moved off the table. It was like, get out of here, you know, just and, and the only time I can think of in music history you know, that that really happened. I mean, I guess disco in the 70s, I guess mm -hmm. there's a point in uh, music history where, you know, people were burning disco records and stuff. And that was kind of like what happened to us, you know, like people were, you know, we lost our record deal. Um, you know, like uh, it was a very dark time in terms of, um, you know, yeah, it just looked like, you know, you guys are done, get out, you know, was pretty much the message. Uh, and, and it was mostly... I won't say it's necessarily from the fans because I don't think the fans ever really deserted us. I think it was really the, the, the business, the industry deserted us and just said, you guys are done, get out. And, uh, and it was very tough and it's very hard to fight against in that day because there was no, you know, it wasn't like the internet. You could just keep doing your stuff. You could keep putting out music and put out videos on YouTube. Like now, they can't really do that to you. They can't just say, hey, this music is gone because mm -hmm. now you have the Internet, you got YouTube, you know, you can still connect with your fans. But back then, if you didn't have a record deal, it was impossible to, to really connect with your fans. So it was very unfortunate timing. And if you look at the grunge scene, you know, they only lasted like a few years. I mean, it was like maybe two years. And, you know, you look at the bands that lasted. I mean, Pearl Jam's still around. Allison Shane singers, you know, died. Uh, Soundgarden singer died. Nirvana singer died. Um, you know, it was short lived, uh, you know, and, and I, I mean, I think they had some cool songs. But, you know, if you look at the bands they were making fun of, you know, like Kiss and Iron Maiden and Metallica and, you know, they were making fun of these kinds of bands. These are the bands that are playing stadiums today. <laughs> so, sure. you know, I kind of look at it and just go. You know, yeah, grunge, very unfortunate, very bad timing for us. Very sad story. I wish I wish it did not happen. And then I, I think the last thing about this is the the, uh, the zeitgeist of the music. The grunge was very depressive and then very down. And, and the music around uh, the grunge era was very optimistic and energetic. So it was such a um, dichotomy as well, in a way. 
Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, and, and again, being from Seattle, you know, we were watching all this and, and, you know, you're just going like, you know, wow. You know, and, 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 and some of it I loved, you know, like Nirvana Team oh, Spirit. Course. You go like, okay, you know, that was just a killer track. And, you know, they, there were some great songs from that era. But, but if you look at, by and large, the whole body of work, you know, I don't think it, it necessarily – you know, I don't think it necessarily stood the test of time that I can see. I mean, I guess Pearl Jam's still out there playing big venues. Um, and, and you know, an offshoot like Foo Fighters, everybody loves Foo Fighters, of course. Um, so, but yeah, if you look back, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about it, but I feel like it had, you know, it was, didn't last long. It was a very short thing. And unfortunately, it just, you know, wiped us out, which was mm -hmm. really, you know, like you said, it was like running into a, you know, freight train and, you know, there was nothing we could do about it and it wasn't our fault. And, uh, and it was really, it's, it's, it's sad, you know, it's a, it's a sad, uh, turn of events.